So for measuring the pH. Right, so you can, um, you have little strips in your bag, but you can find a variety of different strips that we sell downstairs in the supplement section. So there's like, you know, a whole roll of strips where you can just tear off what you need, or these little booklets. I'll pass this around so you can see how to uh, measure it. So basically you just tear off one of these little strips and you're gonna use that to either measure your saliva or your urine. And ideally, in an ideal world, you'd wanna do it for 30 days, three times a day to get an average. So, you know, you have to be pretty diligent. It'd be nice to keep a little log if you can. Uh, so you'd wanna measure it away from foods always. So first thing in the morning and two other times during the day, about two hours away from a meal. And the reason is because if we eat something that's acidic and we're measuring our saliva, there's still residues in there. So we're not getting a real true picture of what the actual acidity or alkalinity level of the saliva is. And when you measure your saliva, it would be good if you could use a little cup and spit a little saliva. It's not the most pleasant thing to do. Yeah. Spoon. <laughs> so, so you're not touching it to your we tongue. We thought your briefly about having you test it here, and then we thought that would be weird. So yeah. we're not going to do that to you. Having everyone spitting in their little spoon. So yeah. you can take your strips home and test it at home. But um, you could get a little tiny cup or spoon or something like that and dip it in so you know that you're not touching other things. You may have brushed your teeth or something like that during the day. And then if you're measuring your urine, don't um, take it the first stream, do it like sort of midstream because again, the first part is where the kidney's excreting that burst of acids. So you don't, that would give you a sort of a false measure. The midstream will really tell you what the average of the urine is. So you could do either, both of those ways are pretty accurate. The most accurate, like I said, is if you measure a couple times a day over a month period of time. Um, and then, so when you dip your little strip, so you rip off your little strip, and when you dip it in, you're gonna see a little scale, which you can pass around. Um, each individual booklet of strips or each company that makes these will have maybe a slightly different chart. So just make sure you're comparing your the paper from this book to this chart so you'll get an accurate reading so the paper will change color depending on what your acidity level or alkalinity is so i'll pass that around so you can just take a look and typically in the morning your morning urine is obviously going to be more acidic right i mean you've slept all night and your body is excreting those acids the kidneys excreting them so your first uh, on the second page there you know your first uh reading of your ph level is typically going to be the highest. Uh, in morning, we'd like to see somewhere between 6.2 and 7. Again, as Michelle said, you'll probably see different books. You're going to get different ranges, but definitely you want to see 6 and up, absolutely. Um, you know, in the afternoon, anywhere from 6.6 .6 to 7.2, and in the evening, anywhere from 7 to 7.4. So you can see, right, you should be getting more alkaline as the day goes on. There are acid and alkaline floods that um, happen during different times of the day. So typically you'll get an acid flood at 7 a.m., at 1 p.m., and about 7 p.m. And then there's alkaline floods as well. So um, was anyone here for Dr. Gentura's talk? You were, okay. Then in four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in his book, he actually has the chart. We have the book up here. For those of you who weren't here, we'll show you his book. Um, and he talks about in his book why we see so many heart attacks. If you ask any nurse, it's typically between 5 and 7 a.m. that people come into hospital when we're at the most acidic, right? Our body's at the most acidic. And Dr. Gentura specifically says that heart attack is a, is a case of acidosis to the extreme, right? The heart muscle just can't function. It's too acid. So one of his remedies for a heart attack is a teaspoon of baking. If you're with someone who's having a heart attack, a teaspoon of baking soda mixed in a glass of water and have them drink it down right away. It can prevent damage. So that's his recommendation for a heart attack and that is in his book. So really interesting. So when you think of the acid and alkaline floods that the body experiences, again, it's not static, right? It's constantly dynamic. We're constantly adjusting our pH levels.